Good morning, church. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and I welcome you all to our service this morning as we will worship our Lord and our God through his word. We are still in our series, Challenges of Changing Times, Challenges of Changing Times, and uh, the Lord has been speaking to us through the book of Joshua. But before we go ahead, I just want to give a few um, announcements. Then after I give those few announcements, uh, we'll open up with a word of prayer and then go along to today's message. Um, I just want to thank you. Thank you all. Thank the whole Lindus Baptist family for your giving. You've been faithfully giving through your tithes and offerings and uh, it's come through each and every time in the bank statement, and we truly appreciate that. We know that there are those of you who are struggling uh, because you prefer to give cash, but we really try and, and, and say to all of you, uh, as far as possible, if, if you can get to uh, an FNB ATM, at least you'll be able to do a cash deposit. So Pastor Byron is going to be posting from time to time the banking details of the church so that you can be able to tithe electronically or at least go to an ATM and deposit the cash. Thank you so much for all your giving because it's enabled us uh, to keep relevant to the times. As our series says, challenges of changing times, um, there's a lot of need, we're able to do food parcels, we're able to do a lot of things uh, because of your faithful giving. And I just want to also take this opportunity to ask the good Lord to bless you. May the good Lord richly bless each and every one of you for your faithful giving. And, and, and may you receive it back, as the scripture says, pressed down and shaken. I really pray a special blessing on all of you, we are in tough times, but people are making financial sacrifices to keep up with their tithes and offering. Also, we, we, we want to connect with you through prayer, and we, we will be establishing some, uh, um, some online platforms uh, by which uh, you'll be able to, to send your prayer request, because we want to hear from you during this time we cannot meet together, we cannot meet in the house of God, but we'll be establishing email addresses and possibly uh, numbers that you can call and WhatsApps and all sorts of things um, in the next coming few weeks by which you can connect to us and know that we are praying for you. We want to know if you're going through something. We want to know if you want us to pray for you. Uh, so we will use it as a platform by which we can pray for one another. Also as a platform by which we can be together in prayer. We can be together in prayer. And, and I know a couple of times we've sent out uh, uh, prayers for the week where we fast and pray for the week as a church. We'll be doing also that uh, during the course of the year. We planned about four of these for this year. So now that we are in the second half of the year, there are two more weeks of fasting and prayer that we are going to send out to you. And I encourage you uh, to pray with us. This is what uh, Jesus said. My house must be a house of prayer. So we need to make sure even though we are not meeting uh, with one another, but we continue to pray as our Lord Jesus encouraged. Uh, the title of my message today is Encouragement to Press On encouragement to press on and i just want to open up with a word of prayer before we look into god's word father we just thank you for your word this morning we pray that we may receive a word in season a word that will speak to each and every one of us we pray that jehovah your holy spirit may guide us jehovah as we worship and 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 and, and hear from you through your word I pray, Father, that you, our hearts will be open to you this morning, our hearts and our minds, and that, Jehovah, we will apply God's word faithfully, in faith, that it will become a living word 
in each and every one of our lives. I pray that this word would transform us, would transform, transform us and encourage us to press on. Because we see that from time to time in the scriptures, we need encouragement to press on. I pray that each and every one of us who hears this word this morning will be encouraged to press on. May you receive all the glory, praise, and honor this morning, Father, as we bring our service before your throne of grace. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray. Amen. Encouragement to press on. The first scripture that I have is comes from Joshua chapter 5, and I'm taking it from verse 13 to verse 15. It reads as follows. Now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, What message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy and it says and joshua did so and joshua did so so we want to have encouragement to press on but i want to read as well from first corinthians 15 and that's verse 58 first corinthians 15 verse 58 and it reads as follows therefore my brothers and sisters stand firm let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. This is Paul writing to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, 58. What is Paul saying? And what can we read? from this passage of scripture in Joshua. Paul this says, stand firm, stand firm. If you are to press on, you cannot be going backwards. You need to stand firm so that you can press on. If you are not standing firm, it means you are going backwards. Let nothing move you. Many things move people. Many things move people problems, trial, tribulation, health issues, world issues, political issues, uh, uh, family issues, uh, work issues, many things move people. But this is what Paul is saying, let nothing move you. Listen to this, always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. If you want to press press on, stand firm, let nothing move you, but give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So you know that God has something for you. You are not laboring for nothing. What a scripture that is encouraging us to press on, stand firm, stand firm in the Lord, Stand in the Lord, with the Lord. May the Lord abide in you and you abide in him. Stand firm in the Lord. And guess what? The Lord has a prize for you. As we start off today, I want you to outline five points of how the Lord is leading you. On how the Lord is leading you. Leading you, in other words, making you press on how the Lord is leading you. And I want us to take our an example from Joshua. And as we go through it, we will be coming back to this passage of scripture in Joshua chapter 5. I want us to have a look at Joshua and see how the Lord led him. And in so doing, you can be writing down 
how the Lord is leading you. Perhaps there will be certain areas where you will feel it's exactly like Joshua. I don't know. But just make a personal note. If not now, at least at the end of this preaching, make a personal note of how the Lord is leading you right now. The first thing that I want us to have a look at is, is, is Joshua learned from Moses. That's the first thing. He learned from Moses. And Deuteronomy 31 verse 3 says, The Lord will destroy these nations before you. And he is hearing that from Moses. Moses hears it from God. But Moses teaches it to Joshua, or Joshua learns this from Moses. So Mo, uh, Joshua learns from Moses. And in fact, if I can read uh, the, the whole scripture there in Deuteronomy chapter 3, it says, The Lord your God himself will cross over ahead of you. He will destroy the nations before you, and you will take possession of their land. Joshua also will cross over ahead of you as the Lord has said. So the Lord will destroy these nations before you. And Joshua learns that from Moses. Who are you learning from? Who are you learning from? There are many people who've been influential in my Christian life. And as I stand before you as a pastor, it's testament to the leadership of our elders. I learned a lot from the elders at LBC. I learned a lot even from Pastor Martin. But there were people previously in my life who also had an influence, who taught me certain things. And one of the things I learned from my father was the power of prayer and the importance of prayer because he was a man of prayer. And I learned that I must pray on all occasions and at all times and in all situations. And so I learned that from my father. So learn godly things from someone who's godly. Why I say godly is because if the person is ungodly, then you will not know or learn the ways of God. And sometimes you, 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 you need to check who are the people who, who are influencing it's not necessarily learning, but influencing your Christianity. And check the credentials of those people. Are they really people of God? So it's important to learn from somebody. It's important to have an example, especially if it's in an area or the person has had an expertise in the ministry that you are involved in. So go and learn from those people as Joshua learned from Moses. But he learned this and he held on to it that they would destroy the nations before them. So Joshua held on to that and he learned it from Moses. The second thing that I want to discuss concerning Moses, I mean Joshua, is he received the promise. The Bible is full of promises. He received the promise. In Deuteronomy 31 verse 8, the Lord goes before you and will be with you and he will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. We're speaking of encouragement. Here it says, do not be discouraged. But it goes on as well there before to say, do not be afraid. And Joshua claims or holds on to this promise. Promises in Deuteronomy by Moses. Promises in the word of God. And he trusts these promises. And he uses the promises and holds God to his promises as he is entering the promised land. I want to say to you, have a promise from God's word. Have a word in season. There is something that is there in the Bible. There is a promise. There is a word. It speaks to you. It speaks to your life. It speaks to your situation. Grab that promise. Receive that promise. Because our God's word is a living word. It's a living word. 
and it is active. As you receive that promise and trust God for that promise, then that promise will come through for you. As I'm speaking about promises, I think for me, Hebrews 13 verse 8, I don't know what it is about Hebrews 13 verse 8. It says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And somehow, when I read Hebrews 13 verse 8, it's like I see the whole Bible coming alive. I see everything becomes much clearer. There is a certain strength all of a sudden that I receive, knowing that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I claim that and am able to apply that to my life and my ministry. So I say to you, just get a word. There is a word. There is a promise in the Bible. Take that word. Take that promise and, 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 and apply it to your life and see what God will do for you. The third point is Joshua knew God's presence in his life. And you need to know God's presence in your life. It says there in Joshua chapter 1 verse 5, As I was with Moses, I will be with you. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. And I want to say to you that God is with you as well. The God who was with Moses, the God who was with Joshua, is still with you today. Know God's presence. Claim God's presence in your life. I do this very often. I claim the presence of God because sometimes it may not feel like it. But no, no, he knew, no, God's presence in your life. And know that he is there for you. The fourth thing is Joshua took up the challenge. Joshua took up the challenge. It says in Joshua chapter 1 verse 10, so Joshua took charge and ordered the officers. So God is handing over to Joshua after Moses. But Joshua takes charge. He takes charge and starts to command and order the officers. In other words, he gets things going. He gets things done. God has given you an instruction. God has given me an instruction. God has given us burdens on ministries. Take charge. Take charge. Because it is coming from God. Take charge. Take up the challenge and go with it. And that's one of the things that Joshua does. He takes up the challenge immediately. So I say to you, don't wait. It doesn't say that Joshua thought about it. Joshua, after a year or two, was still contemplating about it. It says Joshua took up the challenge. Once God has given you a burden or a ministry, once God has given you work to do, do it. Take up the work. Take up the challenge. Do it that God may receive all the glory, praise, and honor. The fifth point that I want us to learn from Joshua today is that Joshua actually crosses the Jordan. This is jo Joshua chapter 5, verse 1. All the Canaanite kings along the coast heard how the Lord had dried up the Jordan before the Israelites. So it was not only a promise, the promise was fulfilled. The promise was fulfilled. You have received a promise, God is going to fulfill that promise. Perhaps I'm speaking to somebody today and I'm saying to you, whatever promise God has given you, he will fulfill it. God will do it. God will do it. I hope I don't sound like a Nike advert, but God will do it. God will do it and it will be done by him. All you need to do is hold on to the promise and you will see God doing it. And I'm speaking to somebody right now, perhaps, who is doubting God's promise. I'm speaking to somebody right now, perhaps, who feels God is not hearing them. I'm speaking to somebody right now today, and I'm saying to that person, God will do it. God 
will do it. And it says the kings heard that the Jordan had been dried up and the Israelites had crossed on dry ground. I'm saying to you today and to somebody out there, you too will cross on dry ground. God will make a way for you where there is no way. But there is a lot that we've spoken about today. It is important for you to hold on to a promise. It is important for you to know God's presence. It is important for you to take up the challenge. It is important for you sometimes to learn from somebody. And once you've done that, God will do it. God will do it. He will make a way for you where there is no way. I pray that someone out there is saying, Amen. So as I've gone through these five points uh, for Joshua, I pray that you, after this teaching, will sit down and think about your own life. Think about the promises God has made to you. Think about how you have felt the presence of God. Think about the challenge that you need to take or have, have already taken. Think about what you're facing in your life and know that God will do it. You too will cross the Jordan. You too will cross on dry ground. The other thing that I wanted to have a look at is that we all need encouragement. All of us need encouragement. Uh, I need encouragement. You need encouragement. Pastor Martin needs encouragement. We all need encouragement. Great men like Moses and Joshua, they too needed encouragement. And the first thing that I want us to have a look at concerning encouragement that we need is that you will receive help when it is needed. You will receive help when it is needed. If you remember, as I read in Joshua chapter 5 at the beginning, it says that as commander of the armies of the Lord, I have now come. As commander of the armies of the Lord, I have now come. This is verse 14, Joshua chapter 5, verse 14. This is what in theology is called a theophany. A theophany meaning appearance of God. Theos meaning God and fame meaning appearance. Therefore, theophany. Theophany meaning appearance of God. And what is said there is that Jesus actually appeared as a commander of the armies of the Lord. And it says there he was carrying a sword. He had his sword drawn in his hand. And we see the same imagery in Revelation, which speaks about Jesus as, as this warrior king with a sword. And so we see again in this instance where the commander appears to Joshua and he appears to Joshua with his sword drawn. And so it is Jesus appearing to Joshua. It's the appearance of God to Joshua or a theophany. Why is he appearing to Joshua? He is appearing to Joshua to help him. He is saying there, I have now come. And I'm saying to somebody today, God has now come. God has now come to help you. God has now come to deliver you. God has now come to set you free. God has now come to heal you. God has now come to speak into your life, to guide you. God has now come to strengthen you. God has now come to give you instruction. I'm saying to somebody out there today, God has now come. The God who came to help Joshua is the same God who is right now coming to help you. When we speak of help, I think of Elisha. Elisha had to show his fearful servant how the armies of the Lord 
had surrounded him, surrounded them. It says there in Second Kings, uh, verse six. I mean, chapter six, Second Kings, chapter six, seventeen to twenty. And I'm reading verse sixteen. It says, "Don't be afraid." The prophet answered, "Those who are with us are more than those." who are with them. And Elisha prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. As the army came down towards him, Elisha prayed to, Lord, to the Lord, struck the army with blindness. So he struck them with blindness as Elisha had asked, and the story continues. Perhaps the Lord hasn't opened your eyes. Perhaps you haven't seen these chariots of fire, horses and chariots of fire around you. What am I saying? Perhaps you haven't seen God's protection. But know this, know this, God is there. God is protecting you. God who was around Elisha and his servant is around you. Hence the prayer from Elisha. Open his eyes so that he may see. And sometimes it's not important to see, but it is important to believe. So I say to you, believe, believe that God is there right by your side, helping you and protecting you because indeed he is there but many of us like Elisha's servant want to see if we haven't seen we don't believe but I put it to you believe believe that Jesus is with you because indeed he is with you and he will be with you till the end of the age I'm also reminded of Paul Paul was visited by the Lord in prison. And sometimes you, you are trapped. You can't escape. Uh, you feel bound. You feel bound. You feel imprisoned by all sorts of things. But this is what the scripture says in Acts 23 verse 11. The following night, the Lord stood near Paul. The following night, the Lord stood near Paul. What am I saying? I am saying the Lord is standing next to you. The Lord who stood next to Paul is also standing next to you. In a time when Paul was in prison, in a time when he was locked up, in a time where his freedoms, and I use that word on purpose because we are living in times because of COVID, we are not free. In a time where our freedom has been restricted, but the Lord stood near Paul. And I pray that there is somebody out there who would cry out to the Lord and the Lord will stand near that person. But what I'm putting forward to you is that the Lord is standing next to each and every one of us. He's right there. He's never gone. Just because you've never seen him, like in Elisha's servant's case, it doesn't mean he's not there. He is right there with you. May the God who stood with Paul stand with you also in your time of need. The other way we receive God's help is through his word. Through his word. And for this, I have chosen Psalm 23. And the Psalm of David, it's a shepherd psalm. It's one of the three shepherd psalms that David wrote. Uh, reads as follows. Psalm 23, we all know this psalm so well and how this psalm has spoken to each and every one of us. How this psalm has helped people. A psalm of David, a word of God, has helped people in their time of struggle. Some going through all sorts of things through depression, some going through uh, trials and tribulation, some going through ill health, some really at death's door, but going through reading and praying this psalm, they were set free. 
And I say today, you don't need to have a theophany. You don't need God to appear to you and you see him. What I'm saying, you have God in his word and God can appear to you through his word and God can help you through his word. And it says that the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads beside, he leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths, the right paths for his name's sake. And listen to this. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, whatever you're going through, it may be the worst of the worst. If the psalmist speaks of the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Verse 5, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That last part is so important. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So you don't want just God to help you. You want to dwell in his presence. You want to dwell in his house forever. You want to be saved unto eternity. Too many times we see people wanting God's help today without necessarily wanting God. But this is what David is saying, that the Lord helps me. But I want to be in the house of God forever. So he, David, wants to dwell with this God. He wants to abide in this God and this God to abide in him forever. And this is so important as we are speaking about God's help. Don't think about the times that you're going through now, but think of eternity. You don't want God to help you today and then tomorrow you're no longer in God. But what you want is God's help, but that you also stay in God's presence, stay in the kingdom of God. And I really love this last verse. It's as if it's a promise. It says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. My prayer for each and every one of us is that we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I think you see the imagery of a shepherd. The green pastures, the waters, refreshes my soul. The walking through the, the valley, fearing no evil. The rod and the staff, preparing a table before me in the presence of my enemy, anointing me with oil. You see the imagery from a shepherd's perspective. And sometimes you need to see God in your life, in whatever you're doing. You may not be a shepherd like David was a shepherd, but you need to see God in your life. You need to identify with God in your life. And you need God's word to help you get through many situations. So God is able to help and he comes to help. But the second important thing is that we must fall down before God. We must fall down before the Lord. And in Joshua 5, 14 it says the following in Joshua 5 14 it says the following then Joshua fell face face down to the ground in reverence he fell face down to the ground in reverence you need to fall down before the Lord and I'm reminded of John Apostle John in Revelations 1 verse 17 he says, when I saw him, this is the first chapter of Revelations, I fell at his feet as though dead. In the first chapter of Revelations, when John sees God, he falls on his feet as though dead. This speaks to me about complete surrender, complete 
reverence for God. Reverence for God unto death. You surrender all to him. You commit yourself to him. You acknowledge him. And this is so important for God. Because those who acknowledge him, he will acknowledge them. You acknowledge him as king of the universe. You acknowledge him as Lord and Savior. You acknowledge him as God Almighty. And you lay it all to him. You fall down. You fall down. You give yourself as a living sacrifice for him to do what he will do with you. Trust the Lord. Commit and surrender in reverence yourself fully to God. What is important by being on the ground? Say, hey, Lindu, why must I fall face down? Why must I surrender? Why must I fully commit? Because there on the ground, Joshua was willing to listen. I say to you, if perhaps you haven't heard from God, whether through theophany or whether through his word, it's because you haven't gone on the ground. You haven't given him his rightful place in your life. You haven't committed and surrendered all to him. You haven't been flat on your knees, committing your life with all that you are to him. And if you haven't done so, I urge you to do so. Because it's when you're on the ground that God can speak to you. Because you are willing to listen. He says there in Joshua chapter 5, 14, What message does my Lord have for his servant? If God appears to you, if God speaks to you through his word, it's for a reason. There is a reason. And this man, Joshua, who has committed himself in reverence to a mighty God, is on the ground. And on the ground you can listen. And he says, that, what message does my Lord have for his servant? And then the Lord speaks to him. We know Paul was Saul. And it's only when he was struck blind and he fell on the ground that from that position of I am helpless, I am before a mighty God, I am on the ground, that Paul heard from God. But guess what? In Acts chapter 9, 15, 16, Ananias heard from God on Paul's behalf. And because Paul had had that humbling experience on the ground where he experienced God and saw Jesus for who he really is. And that's important to get you on the ground. You need to see who God is. You need to understand who he is. And once you have that understanding, you will be on the ground. And Ananias says there, the Lord said to Ananias, sorry, go to this man who is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. So the Lord spoke to Paul who was on the ground through Ananias. And this word that Ananias gave Paul sustained Paul in his ministry. He knew that he is going to suffer for the name of Jesus. And because he knew he was going to suffer for the name of Jesus, it gave him strength and encouragement to press on. We too, like Paul, may suffer for the gospel of Jesus. But we too, like Paul, must press on. We must press on because Jesus suffered for us. And if the Son of God could suffer, who are we? We will not be exempt from suffering. And we must persevere and suffer on because God already knows. And if God already knows we will suffer, God will provide the strength for us to go through and succeed. Paul found this 
after being struck blind and being made low. What am I saying? Sometimes God will humble you. God will lower you before himself. This was the experience of Paul when he was so. But the best thing is for us to see God for who he is. And we lower ourselves and humble ourselves. Worshipping him in truth and in spirit. In reverence to this mighty God, we come before him. And as we do so, we will be at that point where he can speak and we can listen. The third thing that is important is we must experience the presence of God. Joshua chapter 115, it says, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy. The place where you are standing is holy. Experience the presence of God. If we remember, this happened to Moses as well. The burning bush. Moses saw the burning bush and he too was told to take off his sandals because the ground where he was was declared holy. I am saying to you, wherever you are, God can take, take that place into or turn that place into holy ground so that you may experience the presence of God. It doesn't matter where you are. Right now, we are not meeting in the church. You don't have to be in the church to experience the presence of God. I'm saying to you, wherever you are, you can have that experience. You can experience the presence of God wherever you are. And through the testimonies of many, many are experiencing the presence of God where they are. Many are experiencing God at work in their lives, at home, at work, in their community. And I'm saying to you, you can experience God's presence wherever you are. So don't be discouraged by your geographical location. Know that God can meet you there. And this is very important because you cannot move forwards without you personally experiencing that presence and that power of God. You need to personally experience that presence and that power of God. I pray that those who haven't experienced this presence and this power of God in today's message and right now, they would have that personal experience with God as we meditate through the book of Joshua that they or you can have that experience. Experience his presence and experience his power. Church, what can we say to all this? What can we say to all this? Joshua learned from Moses. Find someone godly to learn from. He received a promise. Get a promise from God's word. Just receive a word and hold on to it. Uh, a word that speaks to you, speaks to your life. Also, Joshua knew God's presence in his life. He knew God was present in his life. Know that God is present in your life. Joshua took up the challenge. Take up the challenges for the kingdom of God. And moreover, moreover Joshua crossed the Jordan. God will do it. Whatever you're going through, whatever promise God has given unto you, God will do it. In conclusion, you are on the way. But listen to this. Accept God's encouragement and press on. You are on the way. Accept God's encouragement and press on. Let us close with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Jehovah, that you are right there with us. The God who was with Moses and Joshua is the same God that is with us today. We thank you for the encouragement that is in your word. 
We thank you for revealing yourself to us through your word. We thank you for speaking to us through your word today. We thank you for encouraging us to press on. We thank you for the psalmist to say, though I walk through the valley, the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for thou art with me, for you are with me, Lord. And today, Jehovah, we are facing many challenges. COVID has brought in so many challenges. The times are challenging. We are facing economic challenges. We are facing health challenges. We are facing, even as I speak in this nation, political challenges where there is threat of civil unrest. But Jehovah, we know you are faithful. Jehovah, we trust in you who is the Prince of Peace. We trust you who calmed the storms, that Jehovah, you will calm the storm in our life. We trust you, Jehovah, because you are faithful and true. You are our ever-present helper in time of trouble. And we know that in our time of trouble, Jehovah, you are there to help us. Father, we just give you all the glory, praise, and honor. And we thank you that we close with this, Jehovah. Surely your goodness and your love will follow us all the days of our lives. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We give you all the glory, praise, and honor, Father, in the name of of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray. And all God's people said, Amen.